This video is dedicated to proving a really tight bound on the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n cubed. This is the Raymond zeta function evaluated at 3, and in general, finding the value of the Raymond zeta function at odd integers is kind of a difficult task. So it's cool that we're able to find this really, really tight bound. And this problem is actually the first problem on the Cambridge Step 3 2017 exam. And all the steps involved are actually on the exam as well. So here's the process that we're going to go through. First, we're going to compare 1 over n cubed with reciprocals of binomial coefficients. Then, to sum over all the values of n cubed, we'll be summing over these reciprocals, and we'll use some information that we know about sums of reciprocals of binomial coefficients that we'll actually develop. So the first thing we'll do is address this question of what the sum of reciprocals of binomials looks like, then develop these inequalities, and then using these inequalities to actually get the final inequality that we have, which is really, really tight. If you look at these, they're only 1 over 96 apart. So let's start by proving this fact right over here, which is the first part of the question that asks us to prove that the sum of reciprocals of binomial coefficients is this value right here, when the binomial coefficients have this R parameter floating around. So the first part of the exam actually asks to prove that the sum end here can be represented as a constant factor in terms of r times the difference of two binomial coefficients whose indices are just off by one. So you can imagine then when we sum over all possible n, we're going to get something that looks like it's a telescoping sum. Okay, so let's start with simplifying this expression right over here. So if we write this with binomial coefficients, since we're taking reciprocals, we'll have a n plus r minus 1 factorial of the denominator an r factorial, and then the factorial of the difference of these two, which is n minus 1, and we're subtracting the same type of thing here. So we'll have n plus r factorial in the denominator, and then an r factorial, and an n factorial in the numerator. Now let's factor all the common things we can from the denominators and the numerators. Here we'll have an n plus r minus 1 factorial, and then here an n minus 1 factorial and an r factorial. So in the first term we get a 1, and then here we have an additional m plus r the denominator and an n in the numerator. And this is actually a minus right over here. Okay, so this thing here is r over n plus r. And so we're left with n minus 1 factorial times r factorial times r over n plus r factorial bringing this into this quantity right over here. Notice the difference between n plus r and n minus 1 is r plus 1. So if you wanted to make this look like a binomial coefficient, it would make sense to have an r plus 1 factorial here. We'd have n minus 1 factorial over n plus r factorial. And here we'll have an r plus 1 factorial, this extra r we had before, and we need to divide by r plus 1. And this quantity right over here, by what we just constructed, actually is the reciprocal of m plus 1 choose r plus 1. So when we multiply back, we get exactly this equality right over here. Great. So by this computation, we do have this equality. Let's see how we can use it to get this sum right over here. To make things simpler, I'll actually multiply it by this factor right over here. So r over r plus 1 times this sum right over here is the sum n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over n plus r minus 1 choose r minus 1 plus r, n plus, 1 over n plus r choose r. And then we notice what's happening here when we start with values, let's start with n equals 1 we get 1 over r choose r minus 1 over r plus 1 choose r, then 1 over r plus 1 choose r minus 1 over r plus 2 choose r, etc. And we'll have this telescoping sum with each of these terms canceling. This here is a 1, so we get 1. And so now multiplying by this r plus r over r plus 1 factor again, we get that this sum right over here indeed is r plus 1 over r. 
So in particular, the one that we're going to use quite often is uh, the case where r equals 2. This sum here then, n equals 2 to infinity of 1 over m plus 2 choose 3. If we added the quantity, the thing that's missing here is, with respect to this, is 1 over 3 choose 3. So if we add in 3 choose 3, we should get this quantity here. Here r is 2, so we get 2 plus 1 over 2. So this sum plus 1 is 3 halves. And so this sum has to be a half. Great. So that takes care of all of this piece right over here. We can say that we're done with both of these. And this sum we're going to use quite often. All right, so the next step then is to prove these inequalities relating 1 over n cubed to reciprocals of binomial coefficients. And then finally, we'll use that together with this sum here to get our estimates. So let's start with this first one right over here. All right, so what I'll do is look at dividing by 3 factorial and look at this expression right over here. So we have 1 over m plus 1 choose 3 times a 3 factorial on this denominator right over here. So this is 1 over m plus 1 factorial uh, divided by 3 factorial and then the difference which is n minus 2 factorial times this 3 factorial and these three go these two go away and that leaves us with an n minus 2 factorial in the numerator and an n plus 1 factorial in the denominator and this is the same as this product with the first three terms extracted so we get 1 over n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 this quantity if we take these two together we get n squared minus 1 so this is n cubed minus 1 which is definitely greater than 1 over n cubed whenever n is greater than or equal to 3 because the denominator is less than this denominator right over here. So altogether this quantity is greater than 1 over n cubed so if you multiply by 3 factorial it is the case that for sure this quantity is less than this quantity when n is greater than or equal to 3. Now let's work on this inequality right here. We'll divide by this 5 factorial just like we did in this inequality right over here. So we get for the left hand side 1 over 5 factorial times the quantity 20 over n plus 1 choose 3 minus 1 over n plus 2 choose 5. All right so this is 1 over n uh, 5 factorial times we'll simplify these quantities by reciprocating these things we get 20 times 3 factorial n plus 1 factorial and then the difference of these, which is n minus 2 factorial, and we're subtracting 5 factorial and an n minus, or n plus 2 factorial in the denominator, and then the difference being n minus 3 factorial here for that numerator. Okay, so you notice that we have a 5 factorial here. This is actually 5 factorial. It's 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. We have a 5 factorial here. So these two go away with this. And we're left with n minus 2 factorial over n plus 1 factorial minus uh, n minus 3 factorial over n plus 2 factorial. Now here we'll have an n plus 1, an n, and an n minus 1 of the denominator. That product is n cubed minus n. Because right, this factors into n times n squared minus 1. We'll also have that same thing here, but we have an additional n plus 2 and n minus 1 because this denominator run, will run through all products from n plus 2 all the way to n minus 2. So here we can write this as 1 over n cubed minus n times 1 over n squared minus 4. Okay, the reason to do that is we have this common denominator. We could have kept things in factorials and been fine. And if we clear denominators, then this will work out to n squared minus 5 
over the product of these two, which is n cubed minus n times n squared minus 4. And on the denominator, we'll have a n to the fifth minus a 4n cubed and a minus n cubed. So we get n to the fifth minus 5n cubed and then plus 4n. So we want to prove this whole thing is less than 1 over n cubed. Well, this is definitely less than if we eliminated this piece right over here, and that's n squared minus 5 over n to the fifth minus 5n cubed. And you notice that this here is exactly 1 over n cubed. Lucky for us. So we get this inequality here for sure. So now let's use this inequality to actually establish this lower bound. Okay, so now we get our lower bound for this sum. We have the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n cubed. And we need to be careful about this because there's sort of a few things going on. So first, this inequality only holds when n is greater than or equal to 3. So we'll take out all the sum except for the parts greater than or equal to 3. So this is greater than 1 plus 1 eighth plus 1 over 5 factorial times this expression. I'll write it as two sums. We have the sum n equals 3 to infinity of 1 over 5 factorial times 20 over n plus 1, choose 3, and then the other sum, which is 1 over 5 factorial times, uh, this is a minus actually, a 1 over m plus 2, choose 5. Now here we have 1 plus 1 eighth, and then here, we have the sum n equals 2 to infinity of 1 over m plus 2 choose 3, and that's a half, multiplied by this 20 times 5 factorial, or over 5 factorial. So we have 20 over 5 factorial times 1 half. And then here we have 1 minus 5 factorial, and let's look at the actual sum ends here. Here we have 1 over 5 choose 5, the next term is 1 over 6 choose 5, and then the next term is 1 over 7 choose 5, etc. So if you look at this thing right over here, we have something of this form, where here we have 1 plus 4 choose 4 plus 1. Since we're choosing 5 each time, our r is going to be 4. So we have a 2 plus 4 choose 4 plus 1, etc. So this is this sum right over here, with r being 5, or r being 4. So this is, in total, 5 over 4. Okay, so now we can piece all of this together. We have 1 and an 8th and a 12th and 1 over 4 times 4 factorial. And if you clear denominators here, this works out to be precisely this number right over here. Cool, so a neat idea, and the idea again is when you're trying to find bounds on the sum of 1 over n cubed, you're really estimating in this quantity in terms of binomial coefficients if possible or reciprocals of them, and that gives you these upper and lower bounds, which happen to be, in this case, really, really tight. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, definitely click the like button, and if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel.